Yesterday you saw me turn the Pyrosnub fighter into a V-Wing and today we'll be looking at the successor to the V-Wing, the A-Wing, specifically the RZ-2 according to the Rise of Skywalker Dictionary, which is again the successor to the RZ-1 we saw the Rebellion flying throughout the original trilogy, Rebels and I'm sure many other places. Now this set is retired, you cannot pick this up from LEGO at the time of recording this video or any time in the future unless LEGO decide to re-release a few sequel trilogy sets down the line. I think we do need to see another A-Wing on shelf soon because this set come out in 2019. So it's been a couple of years since we've seen one and I'd love to get an updated model expanding on this even further because after reviewing the Pirate Snub Fighter, there were so many hidden compartments and in rebuilding this, there is so much space to have similar compartments on this. So I'd love for Lego to tackle this again and just improve it. It's not a bad set by any means, which you'll come to know by watching this video. But before we get into the build itself, let's take a look at those minifigures. First up, we have Snap Wexley, who I was introduced to in the Aftermath trilogy, which is a really good book series if you do want to give it a read. But now he's all grown up when we see him in the sequel trilogy and this minifigure both minifigures actually made this set really desirable for me when it was on store shelves. Now, Snap doesn't have a hairpiece, and I don't think there is a hairpiece that represents the way he has his hair styled in the movies. But taking the hair off a Kylo Ren, who did come with both a hair and a helmet, definitely works if you want the helmet off. Just make sure to leave his dog alone. And though Snap's minifigure is next to perfect for the character, Lieutenant Connix is definitely missing something. Now that's much better. Once again, we have a case of Lego not giving a Star Wars character dual molded legs when it works perfectly. Conix, much like Captain Antilles in the tentative boarding, does have brown boots as well as tan trousers. And this is another piece available on the build a minifigure selection in Lego stores. So it's not exactly a costly addition. Now we've got our minifigures, we can take our pilot, which in this case, is Snap Wexley, though I'm sure Lieutenant Connix does know how to fly one of these things and put them in the very large cockpit space that we've got for this A-Wing, which personally I really do love. We do have one of those brackets that some Star Wars fans do prefer to use to display their Lego Star Wars minifigures or Lego minifigures in general, though it is worth noting the reason Lego don't include these for displays is apparently they can warp the legs of a minifigure at the hips if it's kept in for too long. Now, I'm not sure if that is a genuine problem or just a concern they'd have with leaving a minifigure on any sort of connection for a long time. But it's definitely worth noting that if you're seeing any hip warping in your minifigures, perhaps it's time to switch it up and pick another display. But now that Snap Wexley is in there, and again, there is so much room in the cockpit, but that bracket does keep Snap in quite well, considering you can shake it upside down and he's not falling out. So there's definitely some force at play. We do have some play features for this A-Wing, very limited play features, but you can see there are two Technic black beams just on the front here. Perhaps the camera's not picking them up, but right at the front here, we have two Technic beams, which make sure you are facing your Lego models away from you when you fire the flick missiles. But when we push them down, you can see the beams get fired out at full force and even jump back to hit the camera. And the mechanism behind this is really, really cool. In fact, I've got a little structure here built using spare parts just to show you how it works. You can see we have this Technic piece here in red, which is the black element you see just on the top of the A-Wing at the front. And that clips into this Technic clip that's actually holding up this leg at the front. You can see this black and gray leg just at the top of your screen is what's holding up the A-Wing at the front. And not only is it holding up the A-Wing, it's also holding up this mechanism. When you load a missile into the brick at the front of the ship, it clips in nicely and actually raises this red tile. In fact, if I do it quickly, it should fire it up just like it was being fired from the brick itself. If I can get it in at the front and that wasn't too good. So we will try that again. 
and there we go it popped straight out just like it itself was being fired but when you press down on the red technic beam it will fire out the missile and i just thought that was really cool we saw a similar thing in the aat that i reviewed here a few weeks ago and whilst i mention it i am reviewing a new lego set or a different unique lego set every sunday here on the master moldy channel so you can head over to the community tab right now and there should be a poll for you to vote on what you want reviewed next week so make sure your vote is counted and don't forget to come back next week for the review and though this is the only play feature with the set i suppose we do have a display and play feature where if you are playing with the model you can fold all three legs back and it doesn't go perfectly flat, but you can see the legs are barely sticking out and then you can swoosh it around, play with it for a few hours. And when you want to display it back on your shelf, the legs just fold up. And every iteration of A-Wings I have built, I've built a few custom builds based on this model over time, have included this exact feature because I think it's just ingenious to include. A-Wings in general all have a gap at the bottom at the front and to use that, to store the leg was a really cool idea. And now let's take a look at the back of the A-Wing because there is one small problem that doesn't affect my opinion of this set, but you can see the engines do have quite a bit of wiggle in them. And that is because if we pop off one side, you can see there's a round one by one tile holding the engines up and stopping them from wiggling even more. But I don't think it's doing enough. So an easy fix for this, if you do want your engines to stay firm on your A-Wing, is to replace it with a one by one play, a one by one stud. And because it's fairly hidden by the actual wings and engines themselves, it can be in any color. So just look in your spare parts bins for any pieces from other sets and you can see it stops the wiggling in the engine. Whereas on the left side, we do have still a little bit of wiggle. It's really not gonna be a problem for most people, but I like the engine to stay in place and I can't actually wiggle it without moving the entire engine. So I'm gonna do that to both of these A-wing engines. And again, a stud, a one by one plate does work very nicely. I have also tried this with a one by one slope and there's definitely a bit of tension which stops the engines being able to move at all but it also makes it a problem when you're trying to pop them back off whereas the one by one studs and plates work well and again there's no wiggling in each of these engines which is really really nice it's almost the perfect fit just before we move on to scaling this up with my other projects the weapons do rotate a full 360 degrees when the ship is flying and it's fairly easy to open the cockpit because I know it can be a bit hard sometimes but they leave a gap just at the top by this jumper plate that you can stick your finger in stick your nail in or even get something like a brick separator to help you jam that cockpit open and just makes it so much easier to get your minifigures in and out and I can't review this set without talking about the price per not the price per piece, but the pennies per gram as we use on this channel, which is a much more accurate metric when trying to determine the value you're getting in your Lego sets. And taking a look at the table, well, first off, there's a lot of numbers. Let's get rid of all of the unnecessary ones. So we have the set on the left and the pennies per gram, or in this case, pounds per gram of each set. And you'll notice the resistance A-wing third from the top this is in order of the set release. So it's actually one of the oldest sets I have in my collection. And it comes in at the joint cheapest with the 2012 TIE Fighter 11 pence per gram, which is amazing. I mean, if you do have this set in hand, you'll know you're getting a lot of Lego bricks for only a retail price of 24 99 nearly half that of the tie fighter also being valued between 19 and 33 pound on the aftermarket if you want to pick it up today and the question i'm sure most of you have is is this ship minifigure scale so once again we have the trusty 32 by 32 base plate the ship itself is meant to be well there are two versions of this ship and the rz2 is the longer of the two it's meant to be 26 studs long 15 studs wide 
and 17 studs tall, which is this yellow strip here. We'll get more on that in a minute. The biggest difference between the RZ2 and the RZ1 is them extra three studs in length compared to the previous version. And we'll also compare it to the V-Wing in just a minute. But if I place this A-Wing down on the base plate, it's almost a perfect fit. And I say almost because you can see the length is exactly perfect. The width is a little over. It's definitely points something of a stud on either side. You can see it's almost a stud on that side. But if I was to line it up with the right, I think it's probably about 75% of a stud too wide. But when we get to the height, I've included this translucent brick on the bottom to make up for the height the feet are lifting the towel off of the ground. But if I angle this so the camera can see clearly, the yellow bricks are how tall the RZ2 is meant to be, and the blue bricks are the extra height for the predecessor, the RZ1. And this A-Wing is the height of the latter. And that isn't necessarily a problem because LEGO do use these giant fins which you could try and build yourself but i think it doesn't make too much of a difference when it's on display so the rest of the a-wing is the height of these yellow bricks but these fins at the back do increase the height to the previous version so this is going to be perfect as a base for a return of the jedi a-wing and that's exactly what i'll be building in two days time so make sure to come back tuesday perhaps Two days have already passed since this video was out and the video is up, in which case definitely check it out because I will be reducing this A-Wing by the three studs to make it 1 to 45 accurate to the return of the Jedi RZ-1 variant. But I think this is pretty much minifigure scale. So now let's get the V-Wing I made yesterday and compare the sizes. In fact, not only have I got the V-Wing to compare to the A-Wing, you can see how they size up, we'll get more on that in a second. But I've also brought down my custom Vader's Advanced TIE, which I built using the TIE Bomber set that came out last year. These have been paired once or twice by LEGO in a double ship pack, and I'd love for that to return in the future. But the V-Wing is a bit slimmer than the A-Wing is. You can see it's only about six studs wide at the actual body and that comes in so that you can get the wings on the side whereas the a-wing has been built out towards those engines and if i'm being completely honest i prefer the shape of the a-wing it just seems more natural going towards the back and i really like the fins at the back which is how the v-wing is in landing position they do flip up for flight mode and speaking of flight mode perhaps the biggest difference between the two other than they are almost completely different shapes when you really think about it is the engines of the v-wing are on the center of the back and both piled on top of each other whereas for the a-wing you can see the engines are on either side so perhaps that's a bit better because if they lose one engine they've still got the other whereas if the v-wing loses one engine it's probably going to take out the other thruster we also have this design on the back, which I really did like when building it. In fact, it's one of the only parts of the A-Wing I did have built on my one as well as the Fee. And does anyone know where Vader's engines are? And if you do know, please do let me know down in the comments. But both of the ships you've seen in today's video do have their own video. Go check them out and check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thank you so much for watching this review of the A-Wing. Do you have the set? Do you like the set? Personally, I think this is one of the best sequel sets we have got to this date, and hopefully we see a few more. But until then, may the bricks be with you always.